Welcome back ladies and gents, we're now looking at section 4, the strengths and weaknesses of the user interface. Now this is basically bringing us to the end of um, the component uh, 1 and this is you talking about your user interface. So this is the final version, your refined version after you made all the changes and improvements and you're going to be giving your opinion. So for this task you have to investigate the strengths and weaknesses of your final product, what went well and what didn't. Explain why the items you identified are strengths and weaknesses. So look at page 64 and 65 uh, of the help pages um, of the booklet. It does give you a few things to to uh, to you know focus your attention to, uh, but I've identified a few things to answer to help you. So I've got five questions here that I want you to focus your attention to. So first thing, first one, how well have the user interface uh, sorry user requirements been met? So you have to look back at task B, um, and Ask yourself, okay, this is what I said it needs to do. Have I done it? Does my user interface do this? If so, how well does it do it? So what's your reasons for believing it? Yeah, what's your reason for saying, yes, it does meet the user requirements? And if you say, no, it doesn't, and say, why do you not think you know, it meets the user requir requirements? And to a lot of you, you might say, it does meet the user requirements to an extent. So you might say that it partially meets the user requirements. Here's how it does and here's how it doesn't. So you have to explain that. Number two, how suitable is the new design for the target audience and purpose? So do you think it works for the people you're aiming it at? Now, obviously in this situation, in the mock, it's doctor surgery, which means it's designed for everyone. So that's a bit harder to talk about because you can't just say everyone. You have to explain each individual category of people. So the different age and different genders, the different cultures and languages and user requirements, i.e. accessibility needs. You need to say, does it, uh, does it do what it's supposed to do? What uh, you said it should do, yeah? So for example, uh, it's supposed to allow a person to book an appointment. Well, does it? Does it make it easy for them to make an appointment? Does it make it easy for them to, uh, to, to register themselves in for an appointment they've already booked in? Does it make it easy for them to cancel an appointment? Does it make it easy for them to check out the notices and check out what time it opens and closes? Yes or no? How? How do you know? Where's the evidence you need to explain? Number three, how easy is it to use? Explain. Don't just say, yes, it's very easy, or no, it's hard. You've got to say, why is it easy? Where's the evidence for that? Always have it open. In fact, look at it and actually say, don't try and guess. Have it in front of you and say, okay, yeah, this is what makes this easy. Hey, this is what makes it hard, and so on and so forth. This is why early on, I mentioned how you should have a notebook, making notes as you go along, and, that, and this book now should really help you with this task. Because if you listen to my advice, you will have written down the changes that you made and why. And this is where it will really, really help you shine and get those top marks. You need to say, what made it easier to for the customers that you're making it for? Or what made it harder? What would you change and why? Have you used uh, design principles well? Yeah, give examples. So design principles is the way it looks. So have you used good contrast? Have you used a specific house style? Have you used consistency? Have you used large font or not? Have you used quality images uh, or use of white space, uh, hyperlinks, um, and, and, and the list goes on and on. So if so, where and explain it. And question number five, what were the weaknesses? Do you still have um, in your actual product itself? Is there anything that you don't like? If so, why? And why, why are those weaknesses? What makes them a weakness? What would you do to change them? And then more importantly, how would those changes make it better than it already is? So if you say, okay, if I get mine up, for example, you might say, you know, this logo just feels a bit off and what would have been better is to have it as a background or have it on the right hand side to make it consistent with the rest of the, the, uh, the app, the, the user interface. That's fine. But notice how I just said, to one, I said, where it should go instead? And then I said, the reason, the reason for it was to keep it consistent. If I just said, yes, it would have been better to have the logo moved on the first page, that's it. You've not said anything really. You need to say, how should it be changed? And then why? What does that change actually do? Okay. And that should really bring you to the end of section four. So there isn't really much to talk about, but there's a lot to do. I would recommend you spending at least an hour, maybe two, doing this properly. Okay, um, explaining every single point. Please, please, please do not look for shortcuts. Do not um, 
avoid explaining things and you know if you're in my school then you should be using the peel or the pee well uh, strategy used in your English lessons yeah where you make a point you explain with evidence and then you link it to the next point and you meet you should be doing that constantly over and over and over you've got to say have I given um, have I made a point good have I used an, uh, 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 an evidence for this great okay have I explained it now good now move on Okay, so point, evidence, explain, point, evidence, explain, over and over and over. The explanation is a justification. If you don't justify it, you don't get the marks. Okay, hope that is clear. Good luck.